Welcome back to Wrenches in Motion, where if it ain't broke, I ain't buying it. And today, I finished up the head gasket on the CRV, so we're about to start that and see if it works. Well, Gordon has my jack, so I'm not going to be able to lower it down onto the ground. Um, I'm trying to find a good place to put you where you'll be able to see or hear or something. I don't really have a good place, so I'm going to try... I'm going to try to set you right here, and we'll see what happens. No, that should be on good enough to start. What do you think? Positive vibes, negative vibes. Not gonna do a thing. I should say when I put the cams in, all of the valves were super tight, so I adjusted all the valve lash. That might have been contributing as part of our problem earlier. Well, it runs, that's a plus. Sounds like it's got a miss. I may need to adjust those valves again. Well, as you can see, we're not running hot, which is kind of strange because it feels awful warm in here and my fans are not kicking on. But what I wanted to show you is I don't think we're going to be good. So since I, I did take the drain plug out of the side of the block, Maybe there's a bunch of air in there that's still trying to escape. I don't know. So I'm going to shut it down, let it cool off, and then uh, try to start it again tomorrow. Well, maybe it's fixed after all. I don't know. The top radiator hose is still squishy, so it's not getting the combustion gases into the cooling system. Maybe it was just air bubbles. I don't know. Well, here we are. It's the next day with the CRV, and uh, yesterday you heard all that rattling is because I had the valve lash set wrong. For some reason, I picked the wrong set of feeler gauges, and I set them all the way too loose. So today we have the correct 
feeler gauges. So we're going to set them down there. Yeah. So we're going to set them down there. We've got the JBL Flip 5 set up, ready to play some music. Got the phone. Um, let's take off the plug wires, get the valve cover off, and get to work. So I'm trying to figure out how to show you how to do this because I don't have a tripod. So what you want to do is rotate your cam until your lobe is off of the rocker, so you're on the round part. Put your feeler gauge in there, and you should feel some drag. Um, there should be some resistance. Right now there's none because they're way too loose. And I don't know why I never had this tool before, but it is a life saver. You've got the wrench part that goes on and holds the, the nut, and the screwdriver part is your adjustment. So you slide your feeler gauge in and tighten your adjuster or loosen your adjuster until you feel that drag. And then you can hold the screwdriver part and turn the nut part to lock it in. It's so much easier this way. Now that I dropped the feeler gauge. All right, so feeler gauge in. Tighten it up a lot because these are way too loose. Okay, right now I cannot pull the feeler gauge out, so it's too tight. So we'll loosen it, and there's our drag right there. Now take the feeler gauge out, hold the screwdriver still. That's the important step. Hold the screwdriver still because that's your adjustment. And now you can take and spin this <clears throat> and lock your adjustment in. Okay, so we got our valve lash set. Again, this time with the correct size feeler gauges. We filled up the expansion tank and we filled up the radiator again because it was low, which I'm hoping that means there was a lot of air still in the system. And that's what the bubbles were for and not the head gasket. So let's give it a start and hopefully it actually runs. And hopefully it runs quieter. Give it a little more. All right, I'm gonna come back when it's running. Well, it's running. There's definitely a misfire somewhere. Um, could be the plugs. They didn't look all that good. There's steam coming out of the radiator. It's nice and hot. I'm not seeing bubbles though, so that's a good thing. Temp gauge is right in the middle. We do have a check engine light on, probably because of the misfires. I'm kind of happy about that. Yesterday, after a while, I did see the fan kick on. So I know that circuit's working. All right, plugs are replaced, wires are back on. Let's see if it runs any better. No guarantees. That sure don't sound like it. If you know me at all, you know I hate to get beat by a car project. I will work on it and work on it and throw money at it and throw parts at it until I fix it usually. That was the case for the blue CRV up to a certain point. Last night I got so frustrated with it because it would not run. I put it up on Marketplace, got an instant hit, and then I got another hit two hours later offering me more money than I posted it for. So we made a deal. He's going to come down today to pick it up. All I was going to do was put it back together. So, what I did 
we've got the title here with the spare set of keys. And I said, you know, the least I could do is just put it back together for him. So, put it all back together. Um, <laughs> except I lost one of the things there, but that's okay. And then, a strange thing happened. And it runs perfect. I hope you enjoyed the video series on the blue CRV. Um, really a pain in the butt, especially at, towards the end. Uh, once I got the new head on there and then things just didn't want to go right. Um, you know, you can only put a timing belt on so many different ways and every time I did it perfect and spun the thing and all the, all the marks still lined up after two revolutions. So I thought it was good to go. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't the case and now it works. So, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, like, share, subscribe if you like. And uh, I will see you next time.